Hey YouTube, it's Hanna Loba. If you want more Moto America content, check out the new and vastly improved Moto America Live Plus app. It's the only place you can catch all the race action in one place all season long. Click the link in the description below. Well, let's see where Ty Scott and the rest of the field are going to start after qualifying, Jay. PJ Jacobson's on pole with Matthew Skultz, Corey Alexander, who we just heard from, along with Blake Davis. There, Blake, Jake Lewis, and Gerardo are going to be there on row number two, row three. Ty Scott, if he can make it back around, let's see if they can get that thing sorted. Yakov and Tamarini with a solid qualifying again. Mesa, David Anthony, and Torin Collins. Nice to see Torin come back from Canada after racing some super bikes. Max Van, Aiden Sneed, and Brendan Kettleson, Northern Cal AFM guy. Teague Hobbs, Jarrett Nassani, and Enriquez there on row six. A little further back, Soltis, Larry Pagram. Love seeing that next to Owen Williams. And then you got CJ LaRose to Leon and Grig on row number eight. Going a little further back, we got a full grade, Greg. Chase oh, Black, yeah. Tropkoff, and Ullman. And then we have uh, Jorge Aristine, uh, Jeremy Topman, and Richie. And that's our grid. So here we go, it's Super Sport race number one. 19 laps scheduled, and the front row gets away pretty cleanly. Corey Alexander on the inside. He's looking for position, as it looks like it's going to be PJ Jacobson that might lead us into turn one. Blake Davis trying to go around the outside on his Yamaha oh. will slot into third PJ, place. PJ out broke himself a little bit there. So Matthew Skull sneaks back up along the inside. PJ is going to try to straight line it into three. He's not going to make it. Blake Davis on the other Yamaha trying to make a move there. You're right, Greg. He did get a great start, did Blake? We have a rider down in turn three in the background there. But Matthew Skultz, this is what people don't want to see is it's Owen Williams and Torin Collins. Look like they have crashed in turn three together. Trying to dig themselves out of the gravel trap and Blake Davis a little bit wide into turn number five. He's going to lose at least two positions as they head up to turn number six. But Strack Racing on the Yamaha R6. Matthew Skultz looking great right now out front. And all of a sudden, look what you got again. You got Ray Hall Ducatis, it looks like, Greg, in second, third, and fourth. Let's not forget, Kayla Yakov puts it on the podium twice at the ridge, has a good solid qualifying here. She saw that pace at the ridge and saw what these guys could run. And now it's transferred right over here to Laguna Seca. So for any of you out there rooting for Kayla, she's already found herself in fourth, right behind her teammate, Corey Alexander and PJ Jacobson. The Vision Wheel Empire Star Suzuki team trying to figure out what's going on with Ty Scott's bike to try to get him back out and get him valuable lap time. One of the things we have here in Moto America competition is two races per weekend. So any information you can get, even though Ty Scott wasn't able to start this race, is going to be valuable information. Well, and yeah, another Brandon rider Kettleson off the track. Is down in turn 11. That's a shame. I know they've been putting a lot of effort into getting Brendan here for this race. So let Matthew get out of his sights. You're going to see in the left-hand side of your screen here, Brendan Kettleson just loses the front, Greg. We've seen that a million times here at Laguna Seca. Slowest corner on the racetrack, Jay, and that's what we often see. And it looks oh, like another bike. Is that Nassani? That's Jarrett Nassani is down as well. So Jarrett Nassani on the Altus Motorsports GSX-R 750. But back up. So playing it patiently, there's the battle for third as it continues to rage on. And it's starting to close up for the riders behind Jake Lewis on the 85 machine, Altus Motorsports at six foot four and 200 pounds. Talk about Corey Alexander being a big rider. At on least. a big, fast superbike is Kayla now. She looks up the inside of Corey Alexander. is going to make that pass. That could help Blake as well. Let's see if Blake outruns. Now nope, he's not quite able to get up alongside Corey there. So Corey gets passed by his teammate as they roll off here into turn six. Getting back to close that Matthews uh, statement off. Greg, I think when you come off of a big bike like that and you jump on something like this, it's like a toy for him, isn't it? So he can modulate it and get used to running that thing on the edge of the tire. In addition to that, Jay, I'll add that, you know, when you look at the total adjustability of a super bike, when you look at what's available to adjust on a super bike versus a super sport bike, it's more of a simple puzzle as we have a, a rider down mm -hmm. in the gravel trap. I'm trying to see who that is. Is, is it uh, number 12, Greg? So Enriquez, I think it is. That might be down. I'm just trying to see where that could possibly be. It's very technical in the sense that if you mess up a turn here, Greg, it's very difficult to get yourself directly back online. As you can see, these are flat corners, turn three and four. As Corey now looks like he wants to take a shot as they go down into turn five. He's going to go up underneath Kayla, and Jake Lewis is going to do it. So this 
is a tough lap for Kayla right now. She makes one little mistake, and now Gerardo looks like he is trying to do the same, and he's going to make it up. Underneath. On a racetrack as technical as WeatherTech the Raceway Laguna Seca is, and you lose that kind of time, and you're losing that kind of positions. If it was just two or three of them battling, mm. she may have only lost one position. Now here come the leaders as they go through lap traffic into turn number 11. Onto the straightaway we go, and it looks like Matthew Skultz is starting to eke out a little bit more of an advantage. Oh, he's close enough to where Matthew is going to be able to hear him. But I feel like it's got to be, if he doesn't oh, hear, wow, that's a huge six. pass. That's a big pass. To do it there and to do it as early as he's done it, now he's going to have to really run because Matthew will try to attack right back. But you can see it in turn 11 and you can see it in turn 2 there. As you look on the left-hand side of our screen, this is the pass for the lead. For the viewers at home that have never been to Laguna Seca, that is the wildest place to try to, to make a pass. It's very and so for, P for PJ, it's going to be a nice little move that he'll be able to do on the last lap. But he goes tight here into turn 2 as well. You can see him. He gets the bike tipped in real early. The bike backs in. Matthew's going to – oh, Matthew oh. made a big mistake there. So Whoa. look at PJ dead sideways on the exit. But he's not going to know now that Matthew made that mistake. Really, PJ's just got to be clean for the rest of this lap. If he's clean, he's got this one in the bag. He's heard Matthew Skultz and the screaming high RPMs of the Yamaha R6 as PJ Jacobson has played this race to perfection. And the last time they came by the stripe, JP, they were a tenth of a second each off of their fastest laps of the race. What a testament to the wow. Dunlop tires here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca to be able to go that fast this late in the race, even with rear tire spinning, is incredible. Matthew Skultz answered as best he could, but it's that mistake down into turn number two that's created this gap. And PJ, as he gets through the corkscrew. You can hear him backing it in. And for Matthew, Matthew right now is thinking, okay, I got to get these 20 points and put them in my pocket. And uh, for PJ, again, he's not going to be aware right now of the gap he has. He'll probably go into turn 11 pretty defensive, thinking that Matthew might still be there. As you see, he keeps it over to the left-hand side of the track and does exactly that. Keeps it mid-track on the entry. He's on his way to, to victory here at Laguna. PJ Jacobs is out of the final corner for Supersport race number one. We'll take the checkered flag and his fourth victory in Supersport in 2024. Matthew Skultz comes across the line in second, a 7 tenths margin of victory. Oh, wow. And look at the gap that 22 Blake Davis has been able to create. And for Blake Davis, fifth in this championship, he's going to come across the line and stand on the podium in third. And for Jake Lewis, he comes across the stripe in fourth. Maxi Gerardo, Corey Alexander faded to sixth. Mesa in seventh. See PJ there, smiles from the top set. Matthew Skultz, knowing that there's some improvements that they can make. The team will go back overnight and, and they'll work on that. But to your point that you made earlier, he had a great start early on today. Certainly something that he's able to build on as they go back and look at the data overnight. It's going to be huge. It's going to make his life easier throughout the year. Post-race coverage will continue. We'll go back over to Greg and Jason. I'd love it. Here's the results. <laughs> Skulls, Blake Davis, Jake Lewis. Like I said, Gerardo and Corey slip back to sixth. We'll talk to him for tomorrow to find out what happened. Mesa, solid. Kayla also slipped back to eighth. And Tambourine, your top ten. Let's get to Hannah.